do not buy the Mac Pro, unless you're a production house or a medium to large size company. If you're an individual, don't buy it because it's such, such an overkill. But hey, this is what this video is all about. Apple has just opened up the sales for their brand new Mac Pro 2019, their most powerful computer ever, and now that the prices and all the configurations are official and we can see all of them, I wanted to make this video and talk about which configuration is worth it the most for every single workflow. So yeah, grab some snacks and enjoy. Keep your Mac running fast and secure, check out Intego's Premium Bundle X9 that includes a number of very useful tools for your Mac. Use the link below to get a 60% discount. Okay, so back in the mid-2000s, Apple used to sell this cheese grater Mac Pro, which was actually very well received. It was basically a PC that was running on macOS, and it was fully upgradable and customizable, which was pretty amazing. And this was the Mac Pro that Apple was selling from 2006 to 2013, with updates almost every single year, and then in late 2013, Apple released the new Mac Pro, which was, you know, the trash can Mac Pro that was not that well received. I mean, yes, it was small and portable and extremely compact and it also looked incredible. However, the thermal system wasn't great, the GPUs were proprietary, and uh, yeah, this meant that you couldn't really slot in any GPU that you wanted, so overall, it was pretty much a failure. In fact, it was so much of a failure that Apple didn't even update the Mac Pro at all in more than six years. Yeah. Well, anyway, now in 2019, they've announced the new Mac Pro, the third generation, which has a very similar design and overall idea to the original Mac Pro. So it's this big PC-like case that's also fully upgradable with a significantly improved thermal system. It's pretty much the perfect Mac for those that wanted a PC tower-like experience running Mac OS that was not a Hackintosh. Fortunately, it is very, very expensive starting at $6,000 for the baseline option and going as high as just over $50,000. Now, I was actually expecting around a $50,000 price point, max price. Um, so yeah, I was pretty much spot on, but that's not necessarily a good thing because yeah, the price is pretty high. So okay, which configuration is best suited for which workflow? Well, if you're a freelance developer, a freelance video producer, or a freelance game designer, someone that mostly works on its own, uh, or someone that has a very small team, and someone that needs a Mac Pro but doesn't want to break the bank, then in that case the best option is just getting the entry-level model and then upgrading it from there. This one comes with a 3.5 GHz 8-core Intel Xeon processor, 32 GB of VCC memory, the Radeon Pro 580X with 8 GB of GDDR5 memory, 256 gigabytes of flash storage, and those really, really unique silver and black keyboard and magic mouse that you can only buy with a Mac Pro. Now, this exact configuration will cost you $6,000 or 5,500 pounds in the UK, which is pretty nuts. But it turns out that this is actually just $1,000 more than the iMac Pro, which starts at $5,000. Now, the iMac Pro does offer a built-in 5K display, a way more powerful graphics and more storage, up to one terabyte on, on the baseline, which is pretty nuts. So if you do not plan on upgrading your Mac Pro in any way, I would definitely just recommend buying the iMac Pro. But if you're planning to upgrade it, then definitely go with a baseline $6,000 option Mac Pro. Now, when it comes to which upgrades to get first, the GPU is the main issue in this one. The 580X is a very weak graphics card compared to something like the Vega 56 or 64 inside the iMac Pro, and while you can indeed purchase Apple's MPX modules, which cost $2,800 for the Vega 2, uh, you can indeed use any GPU that you wish. And video cards are not yet officially supported, unfortunately, so you would have to go with the AMD route, but the good news here is that you can actually find something like a Vega 64 overclocked with three fans, which is even more powerful than the one that's inside the iMac Pro for just around $300 to $400 on Amazon. I've actually left a link for those in the description box down below. Now, something that you might want to consider when configuring this is bumping up the storage, as 256 gigabytes is pretty much a joke on such an expensive machine. And while you can upgrade the storage afterwards, Apple doesn't really sell any storage modules at this point, aside from the RAID hard drive modules, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, next up, if you own an app development company and you need a beast of a machine to compile all of your app packages quickly and money isn't an issue, then the best option in this case is getting the 28-core Mac Pro with 48 gigabytes of ECC memory, the Radeon Pro 580X, and then 256 gigabytes of storage. As long as you're not working in game development, you don't really need a powerful GPU. Uh, for pretty much any app developer, the most important component of a computer is the CPU. So in this case, definitely max it out, and this configuration will cost you $13,300. I know, pretty nuts. Now, if you're working in a game development studio and you're working with engines such as Unity or especially Unreal Engine, 
then you do need a pretty good GPU. Now, CPU is still very important, but depending on your budget, I would drop the cores to uh, the 12 core model, preferably 16 or even 24. But again, this depends on uh, how much you want to invest in this Mac Pro. I would personally keep the RAM to 48 gigabytes and GPU wise, I would honestly suggest just sticking with a stock GPU and then buying two Vega 64s and just slotting those in. This is by far the best option cost and performance wise. Now you can of course get Apple's highest end GPU option which includes the insanely powerful two Radeon Vega 2 Duos with 128 gigabytes of HBM2 video memory, uh, which is insane. This is the most powerful GPU that you can buy but those are better used for 3D modeling and 3D rendering than game development. So the 12 core plus the two Vega 64 GPUs configuration off of Amazon, uh, all of this would cost you around $8,000, while my recommended 16 core configuration would cost you $9,000. Okay, next up, if you own a 3D modeling studio and you use tools such as Maya, 3ds Max, which by the way only works on Windows, uh, V-Ray, Blender, Keyshot, then you'll need a lot, a lot of power. Now, 3D modeling is pretty easy, so it really depends on what model you work on, but in most cases, you can do it even from a MacBook Pro, which is pretty good. Now, the tricky part is the rendering, and here you'll need to be aware uh, if your renderer is CPU or GPU-based. Now, most renderers are GPU-based, however, some of them, such as Keyshot, are actually CPU-based unless you use Keyshot 9, which finally supports GPU rendering. So, in most cases, what you'll need here is a very powerful GPU. Now, some rendering engines do work better with NVIDIA cards, in which case I would strongly advise against buying a Mac Pro and just building a high-end PC instead. But if you know that your rendering works well with AMD cards and you have the budget for it, then definitely get the baseline model, but with the highest end GPU option uh, if you have the budget for it again, because that's crazy expensive. So this will cost you overall $16,800. Pretty much the same thing when it comes to animation. GPU is definitely the most important component here, especially um, something with loads of video memory. So again, same configuration here for uh, animation. Now, if you're actually rendering using your CPU, then it gets a bit tricky here because you see, while the 28 core Mac Pro is very, very powerful, you're just far better just building a PC and buying an AMD Threadripper instead. A 2990WX, that's amazing when you have that, by the way. Uh, so that's a 32 core processor with 64 threads. And of course, that you can even overclock this, which you cannot do uh, with your Mac Pro, by the way. So you can get some insane performance out of that processor and you know a PC with that uh, CPU. Uh, far, far better than what you can achieve with a Mac Pro at a significantly lower cost. Now, if you're into scientific work and you need something that can process large amounts of data very accurately, then buckle up because this configuration won't be cheap at all. For scientific work and data accuracy, you need two things the most, CPU and RAM. CPU-wise, definitely max it out if you have the budget for it. So yeah, in this case, definitely get the 28-core Intel Xeon W chip and again, if your budget allows for it, then definitely get the maxed out RAM option, so 1.5 terabytes of ECC memory. ECC memory is a special type of RAM, so ECC comes from error correcting code memory, uh, and it's very important to have when accuracy of data is crucial, so scientific or financial computing. You don't need to touch the GPU or even the storage, however, you might want to add some wheels on this in case you want to move it from one lab to another, in which case this configuration will cost you $38,400. Ouch. Okay, so now what if you want to run the Mac Pro as a server? Well, this is again a pretty tricky one because it depends on the scale of your data center. So if you just have a small company and you want to run a Mac as a server, then I do have some really good news for you because you can actually run any Mac, you can turn it into a server quite easily. So all you have to do is just uh, go into uh, the settings menu, go into sharing, and you can enable quite a few things from there uh, if you want other Macs to access your Mac. And then you can also do it via the uh, macOS server app, which is you know paid and you can buy that. And it offers a few interesting features that you can use to turn your Mac into a server. So definitely look into that uh, if you want to turn any Mac into a server. However, if you need more power, then using a Mac Pro as a server is a pretty good idea, since what you're looking for in a server is 24-7 operation. And as the Mac Pro has very, very good cooling, the best one in any Mac, 24-hour operation won't be an issue for the Mac Pro. Now, Apple will be selling a special version of the Mac Pro, which can be mounted on a server rack for $500 more than a standard version. So yeah, if you're planning on building a data center, then this is definitely the one to get since you can buy multiple Mac Pros this way and stack them on top of one another. 
Now, in terms of what configuration to get, again, if money isn't an issue, which I assume is not if you're planning on building a data center, uh, then definitely get the 28 core CPU, as much RAM as possible, so 1.5 terabytes in this case. Uh, you don't need to max out the GPU unless you'll be doing any virtualization for your clients. Uh, so you can actually keep the stock uh, 580X GPU. Now storage-wise, bump this to one terabyte and then also get the Pegasus R4i, 32 terabyte RAID and VX module, which is another $2,300. And you can actually get two of those for up to 64 terabytes of internal RAID storage, which is actually perfect for servers. So this configuration will cost you $38,800 for the Mac Pro, $500 for the Mac Pro rack mount, $4,600 for the Pegasus R4i modules, which is a total of $45,300, uh, yeah. <laughs> and if you need to run graphically intensive apps on your server as well, well in that case definitely get a maxed out GPU option, which would bring the total to $56,100, just for one single unit. Oh, and data centers actually have hundreds and even thousands of these. Now, if you have a video production house, this is actually the closest thing to what we do here, uh, but again, I'm not talking about casual videos like you know we do, but rather full Hollywood production level shoots shot on Red Raw, 8K, yeah, things like that. And in this case, the 12 core Mac Pro is actually a very good option. You don't need more than that for video editing, uh, but you will need 48 gigabytes of RAM, as 32 is a bit on the low end. Uh, now, GPU-wise, it really does depend on the amount of effects that you apply to your footage. If you don't work with 8K footage and you just do 4K RAW, uh, then buying a Vega 64 or even two of these is a very good option. Otherwise, if your workflow is very intensive, then definitely go for the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo option. Uh, you can also get two Radeon Pro Vega 2 GPUs. However, I highly suggest just buying a Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo instead because you do get two GPUs in the same MPX module, which gives you a spare PCIe slot to use for anything else that you wish. Now, production houses do work off of large storage servers via 10 gig Ethernet. Uh, the Mac Pro actually has two 10 gig Ethernet ports, by the way. Uh, so the 256 gigabytes flash is actually the best storage option here. Plus, the Mac Pro also has four extra uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports by default, and you can also add two more ports with each MPX module that you add. Now, there is a four terabyte internal SSD option and even an eight terabyte, which we'll be releasing soon. However, for 8K raw workflows, that's just not enough storage for a single project. So yeah, in that case, I do recommend getting the Promise Pegasus R4i, which gives you 32 terabytes of internal RAID storage uh, using that MPX module slot that you freed up by uh, getting the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo. Now, if you do work with ProRes and ProRes RAW, then definitely get the Apple Afterburner card for an extra $2,000, uh, which uses the slot number five in terms of PCIe slots and not the MPX module slots. And this brings the total cost to $14,900 for the Mac Pro, plus $2,300 for the 32 terabyte MPX module, plus $2,000 for the Afterburner card, plus another $10,000 if you decide to go for two uh, Pro XDR displays, which I do highly recommend for video production, and you get a total of $29,200. And finally, if you own a music production studio, definitely get the 12 core Mac Pro option. CPU is the most important component um, in uh, Logic Pro 10, for example, or any music production. Uh, also get 48 gigabytes of RAM, also get a baseline 580 the XGPU because that's more than enough, and also the baseline storage, that's more than enough as well. Uh, also, do get the wheels if you're planning on moving it to another studio, and in this case, the cost will be $7,700. So yeah, there you go. These are my suggested Mac Pro configurations for each workflow. The question is, am I getting a Mac Pro? And the answer is actually not. Now, I'm not getting one. It's just a complete overkill for our workflow. And the 2019 iMac is a much better choice. But if you want to see, I don't know, the baseline model featured in a video and, you know, benchmarks and the full review of that, then we might get it uh, in January. So definitely let me know about that if you want to see a video on the baseline model, maybe. Um, but yeah, this has been pretty much it for now. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the Mac Pro. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So okay, signing out. Cheers.